speaking with uh, my spiritual brother Maladin, uh, we uh, we talked about God's word and God's original purpose for man. And what we definitely got from the beginning was uh, God created man in his image. And he created him as uh, something reflective of himself. Now, uniquely, uh, God said that he made both man and woman, both male and female, in his image. So we know that God had both in his image. In other words, God was containing both. What was unique about the spiritual creation versus the, uh, the, the angels, say, versus man was, the angels seem to have had more of a male orientation according to what we see through Genesis to Revelation, wherever they appear. With regard to man being made in God's image, he made them both male and female, so male and female was part of God. And therefore, um, God in the beginning, of course, made Christ. And therefore, when he was making man, we know in the beginning it said, let us make man in our image. And when he made man in our image, well, we know he was speaking in a plural. He was in a situation where it wasn't him by himself. He was with his own creation, almost like a uh, something that came from himself, almost asexual. And then we know that in creation there is actual things such as that. And therefore, uh, when God made man, it was a unique thing because he was now separating, eventually, the male and the female. But he created the male first and then he made the female come out of that male so that they were still from the original one body. And therefore, for Adam to harm Eve would have, or to harm the woman would have been a sin against his own body. And because he did not deal with the original problem that occurred when he was commanded to not eat from property that did not belong to him, he did not correct Eve who was, or the woman who was deceived. And eventually what happened was he sinned against himself. And therefore he went down that journey by his own consent. God did not intend this. There are religious leaders who will go down little tangents who will try to imply the fact that God intended sin. He needed sin to happen. It was like an amusement for God. A perfect creation um, needed to have anarchy happen. It makes no sense. God did not intend man to sin and he gave him his parameters under free will to do the right will, which was free. When he did his own will, it cost him. And that's why when you do your own will, you go to a lawyer, that will cost you. If you do something for free, well, if you did nothing and had no will, the state would have it anyways, which has the power of God for the time being anyways, which means they have everything you own anyways. Why do you need to direct it? All you do is pass down debt through that process. So God's original purpose was for man to be free, to have his perfect free will to do the right thing, not the wrong thing. And therefore, it was never God's purpose to have man enter into debt or sin. Sin, synonymous with the word charge, which is what man's been on. He's been on a timeline from the time he sinned. We have an hourglass turned upside down where all the crystals are falling through. And it's only a matter of time before God's rest day after he made man, he said everything was good, then he rested. So we technically are in God's rest day. Now the landlord is not going to be resting shortly because he had a time frame, as he had for each day of creation. Now we're in his seventh day, and he soon will be returning. And he's given his son the power who was involved in the original creation of man, who had a vested interest in man, who died for man, who became the second Adam, who made up for the first Adam. And therefore, he is here for us to show us the way the scripture gives us the plan from A to Z, from Genesis to Revelation. And man needs to return back to his father. So therefore, he needs to abandon sin. 
And there is the journey of the prodigal son. And therefore, there is the end of the journey by basically abandoning what is wrong and doing what is right. Not touching what is unclean and being assured by what is clean and assured for it. So, yes, it is in a name because you identify yourself by a name. And all those that will continue not seeing this will come forward and get the mark of the beast by consent. Because they will actually be only confirming what they've already been doing. This time they'll actually be completely complying with a law that comes into place to completely make them part of the aggregate of those that are sinners instead of separate, not part of the world, not part of sin. Take the time. Research the information. Do your own due diligence. If what I'm saying is not correct, well, then you have the ability to send us an email. If you can find something that is incorrect on this, we'd be willing to listen. What we're mainly running into is people trying to say, I want the money. How do I keep the money? And still be involved in something that has to do with non-money. Well, you cannot have God in mammon. So if you're prepared to give it all up, forsake all, be at par, be free, be separate from it, well then that's the journey that it will be, but you cannot hold on to the property of another and expect God to aid and abet you down a spiritual journey while well, you're still got one foot in the secular side, which has nothing to do with his journey. You cannot serve God in mammon.